So who am I? Some of you might know me. I'm assuming most of you probably don't. Um, my name's Kyle Williams, 23 years old. Um, and from what I know, at least people want to be transparent, I'm the newest six-figure trader. Um, currently, that's how my profit, li profit lead chart looks as of uh, last week. There we go. So very beginning. Um, fall 2014, I started as a freshman at San Diego State University um, as a mechanical engineering major, um, mainly because my dad was a mechanical engineer and because I was good at math. Um, but after the first year, I pretty much knew that was not for me. You know, kids in my class were talking about like building cars on the weekend, and I was like, forget that. That's freaking, you know, I don't even understand that. But so I knew it wasn't for me, but I wasn't going to start swapping majors and then switching back and forth. I needed to find something, and I preferably wanted to do something outside the box. So the first thing I found uh, was FanDuel sports betting. Um, I loved the idea of potentially betting five bucks a dollar for one day. And then if I won that tournament, I'd make five, ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars. Um, specifically NBA sports betting. Tried it for a year or two, probably end up losing 200, 300 bucks. You know, I'd like try to find like an edge and there was nothing. I couldn't, no success there. There we go. Um, so one random summer night, um, I watched The Big Short. Who's seen The Big Short? Yeah, love, 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 love this movie. Um, and so I realized really what went down in 2008. I didn't really think much of it. Luckily, my parents had pretty stable jobs, so I wasn't affected, we weren't affected financially. But um, I had no idea until I watched this movie. And so back when, backtracking to when I was about nine or 10, I had asked my parents, can I get an allowance? And so we made a deal if I, you know, wash dishes, take out the trash, pick up the dog poop, you know, I can get five bucks a week. And the best thing they ever did for me was they said, you know, they kind of gave me the investing bug. They said, if you can save up $5 a week for 20 weeks for the 100 bucks, we'll put it into a mutual fund. Now at 10 years old, I have no idea what a mutual fund is, but they explained to me like, oh, you'll make more money. I'm like, sweet, you know, sign me up. Um, and so I kind of forgot about that. It kind of put it on like, in the back of my head, like every 100 bucks, I was just gonna put it in, you know, every 20 weeks. Um, and for like Christmas money, birthday money, that kind of thing. And so once I watched this movie, I realized, did I just lose, did I lose 50% like everybody else in 2008? And I found the mutual fund I owned and I looked at the chart and yeah, I lost like 55, 60%. And so I realized, you know, I can't, I don't want that to happen to me again. You know, I realized how ignorant I was in this game, so I needed to learn more. So I actually bought this book, uh, Penny Stocking for or Penny or Stock Investing for Dummies. Just basic information, nothing really that special, until there was a warning about penny stocks. Like they made it a little different, right? And I'm like, who cares? They're they're cents, they're cents instead of dollars. Like, what's the big deal? What's so different? And so I Google penny stocks, and I'm sure you all know what pops up. Tim Sykes. <laughs> By far my favorite picture of him. So, of course, like most of you, I'm skeptical at first, but, you know, he has so many hundreds of videos, you watch enough, he seems pretty legit. And so, from the money I was making from the mutual fund, I realized that mutual fund sucked, you know, cost me a bunch of fees, and then the part-time job I had as a waiter while going to college, it got me enough money to pay for the challenge and open up a trading account. So, I joined the challenge in June of 2016. So, started with a 6K E-Trade account, and um, did not study at all. I mean... So those of you who know the challenge, you get all the DVDs. So I, had, I started with, um, what's it called? Penny stocking, for, not framework, penny stocking, and, or part one. And I watched like an hour. And I was like, okay, forget this. Like, let's trade. And um, first trade on E-Trade, you know, just no, I was blind. No, no software, only a delayed, you know, level one chart. And the chart didn't even work at E-Trade. I made like, you know, I got an alert from Tim. And I was like, oh, great, you know. But then lost like 50 bucks. Did no, no, had no idea what happened. Um, if I didn't have a day trade available because I was under PDT, um, I wouldn't even wake up for the market open. I didn't care, you know. Um, even if I did have a day trade available, I would like wake up at 6:15 and and just stroll my way over to the market or the laptop. So after you know two or three months of of losing nearly a third of my account, I realized this is not going to work. Like I'm going to lose all my money. So I decided I'm going to take it seriously. I'm going to go through all the DVDs and take it, or then video lessons and then the webinars. So by the beginning of 2017, so about six months from when I started, I eventually finished all the DVDs. And you'd think after doing that, I'd have a good like base of, you know, what I, like a, a good base of knowledge, like I'm gonna start getting it, get it or starting to click, things start to happen, but that was uh, not the case. So at this point, I'm now down $4,000, close to 4,300, which is my lowest point. My win rate was at 20%. And if you look at these charts here, here's this is January 2017, 
and February 2017. And so if you look, what's uh, win right there? Zero, okay? The entire month, not win. Like you couldn't pay me to win, make money, right? And it went all the way into February, two weeks right here. So this is now six weeks of me straight losing. So I essentially realized like you have no idea what you're doing. Like I'm gonna keep losing money if I do this way. But the great thing about it is, look how small the losses are. 40, 22, 100, a little on the upside 50. So it's like, after all these three, six weeks, I took 14 losses in a row. So it's like, who would still be here if you took 14 losses in a row? Like, would your, account, would your st account still be intact? Hopefully it would be, but I've heard many stories where it's not. Um, so I got to this point, I got six weeks straight losing in a row, and I had to take a step back. I had to realize what was working was not gonna keep working. You know, it, I wasn't doing the right thing. And so I decided I was gonna study over trading, that was the main priority, and I was gonna wait as long as I had to to make one profitable trade, just one. I don't care how long I wait, a month, six months, a few weeks, whatever it may be, I wanna wait to see a trade that is so good that I feel like I can't not lose money. So unfortunately, or fortunately for me, I only had to wait a week. You see I made a whopping $5 and that was this play. Fannie Mae. So some of you who know this pattern, it's the same exact pattern that Tim Grittani made $200,000 on. It isn't the same day, but it's the same stock and years later. So after studying the DVDs, studying all of Tim's lessons, I realized like this is the play. This is the one that Tim Grittani made a massive amount of money on, and I knew it inside and out. I just never played it yet. So, you know, Jack and, and Tim and Don mentioned this a little bit about the OTC, di OTC dip buys, but look how, look how many panic candles there are. It's like almost an hour of straight selling. And so if you go to, who's ever seen, or who knows of Tim Grittani's, um website, his blog post website? A couple of you? So it's called Trade the Ticker at blogspot, blogspot.com. On there you'll see a tab, it says Learn Level 2. So you'll be able to watch Level 2 videos and catch tops and bottoms in the OTC market. So that's exactly what happened right here, right? So I watch level two, bid start, to, bid start to firm up, ask starts to sell off, and all of a sudden we bounce. I buy 100 shares, and I said, I'm gonna wait for the first red candle and I'm gonna sell. Unfortunately, that was right here. Um, missed a whole dollar share. So if you go to the trade statement here. So yeah, I bought 100 shares, and I sold for 25 cents later, and back then that's when E-Trade was $10 in, $10 out, instead of five or like four or three, how it is now. So I made $5 or round it up to $6. <laughs> so, of course the $6 means nothing, but it was a massive, massive shift because I realized at this point, now I know how to trade a setup and repeat it over and over again. Like this setup can happen again, and if I take a bigger size, I can grow my account with this setup. So the next one, this is now a month later. Now, you're only hearing this in five minutes of me talking about it, but from February from Fannie Mae happened to now, I'm now studying dip buys solely, right? I don't care any about any other setup. This is the only setup I want to learn well, and I tracked it every time it happened. So this stock had panicked about two or a week or two later. So I had, no, I had already known this stock can bounce, right? So I see it panicking again, and it's very similar to Fannie Mae, right? You got one candle, then it fades a little bit and goes a little more. And so you see here, I might have chased a little bit. I didn't get the bottom. And that's because Tim took my fills. Um, I was trying to belong at like $2, and then 30 seconds later, he sa Tim says he's long at two. And um, I thought about chasing, and, I s and the only reason why I did was because the dip buy before was just like this. It was just as good. So I said, you know what, I'll go, I'll go a little bit bigger, I'll go a little higher, and I got long, and I, my goal was three bucks, went into three, and so I sold at 2.95 for, how much? 254 bucks. So 299 or 229 to 295, uh, 400 shares, about 20, almost 29%. And so you see here on my monthly chart, this is now my March of 2017, still a lot of losses, but look at my win rate. 44 versus 20 and zero, you know, the months before. And then you notice I only made $132 that month. So if I didn't, if I didn't size up because I knew how good this dip buy was gonna be, I would have been unprofitable. But that doesn't really matter, right? You know, I made 200 bucks on the 24th, which was EMMD, and that put me green on the month, and that's all that mattered. So this was my very first profitable month. 
Next one. So after dip buying so many of these stocks, I realized, well, what were, or I realized that the stocks I was dip buying were already overextended, right? EMMD was a runner that ran, or it was a promotion that already was up like 20 days in a row. It was just steadily going up. So I realized some of these OTCs I could short before they panicked, right? Or before, sorry, as they panicked. So I could short the panic, cover, and then dip buy them. And so back in February was my birthday when I first turned 21, when I can then open up a brokerage account at Interactive Brokers. So at that time, I was down 4K in my E-Trade account. I thought, okay, I'll go back to 6K and kind of restart. So I put 4K in Interactive Brokers. Now I have 2K at E-Trade, 4K Interactive Brokers, learning to dip or dip buying in E-Trade and short selling in Interactive Brokers. And so I'm learning the short side while I'm dip buying and being profitable. So after some losses and testing everything out, I eventually learned how to short sell these OTCs and then dip buying them when they panicked or the panic was over. So this is one of the first really big wins for me on the short side. Um, Buds, if anyone knows, it's a former um, weed runner. And so the daily chart up in the upper right here, we see you know four about four green candles, but the last three were very very big. And so all I was doing was waiting for the first red day. And so you might notice on the daily chart, you see this high wick right here. Um, and that's, so that's this intraday. So you see here, it, it stuffed at two, couldn't break two, and then it panics. Now, unfortunately, as you can see, I chased. I'm still learning at this point, you know, I'm not perfect by any means. But I said, you know, if this closes even more weaker, I want to hold overnight. And so it did that. It bounced, the bounce failed, and it cranked even more, and then sideways into the close. Now, next morning, I was going to risk off this level right here. And it had a couple little ticks, but they weren't big enough to have any volume come in. You can see the volume's lower. And then it went right in the day. So I panicked in the dip here, and I covered in the close for 160 bucks. And that's the trade right there for 176 to 135 for 23%. So then the grind. So dip buying OTC panics, short selling overextended OTCs, did those two setups for pretty much the next five to six months. These are just the next three months after that. So we have uh, June. June is only 370 bucks, but a 75% win rate. And now you can start seeing, you know, maybe not so here, but let's look, go to July. 66% win rate, another 300 bucks. But win, average win is now 46, which is higher than my average loss of 26. Average gain 14% over average loss only 5%. So seeing these stats immediately realize like I am becoming profitable. I'm having consistent months over and over again. And then we get into August. Now 900 bucks, still around 64% win rate. And I'm, my stats are the same, you know, higher than every loss. And so, just adding these small wins up over month over month. Um, over the next six months to December 2017, I'm now break even. Back from low 4,300 to here. And so this is the actual short that got me over to break even, which was CAN. CAN is another weed runner. Same thing as BUDS. I don't have the daily chart up, but it was the, almost exactly the same as BUDS. You know, three, four, five day, green days in a row. Again, this is, I'm showing these intraday charts because it shows a little bit of my imperfection, right? Normally, I would. Me, if I took the short again, I would not have taken the short. This was too early. Um, but I wanted to, you know, it's five green days in a row. I wanted to hold this overnight if it could close weak. I was seconds from clo covering it right here. It faded in the close. Little, little small bounce. I held overnight. And if it was going to break this top next morning, I was going to cut it. It went red for the first time in four days. I doubled down, covered in these dips, and covered here. Unfortunately, I missed this perfect dip by right here. But I, I covered out for $713. And so you see here, right, like, or, thank you. I'm adding size as I'm getting more and more comfortable with these plays. Um, I'm willing to accept bigger, bigger risks. And so the next setup, after I get break even, I decide, well, sorry, let me go back. As you learn one setup, it's easy to learn the second one. Then it's easy to learn the third one. It's like learning a language. So at this point, I'm now break even, I feel good, and these OTC promotions are very similar to overextended OTC stocks or OTC runners in general. So the first one, the one of the first promotions I shorted was uh, UMFG. This promoted twice, I got both these, both these pumps, I shorted both of them, but the one we're talking about is this one right here. Um, I shorted 100 shares, so again, when I start a new setup though, I don't take the same size that I used on the setups I'm good at, right? Because I don't know what I'm doing, I'm trying to learn. So I'm using a small size I'm comfortable with, it was 100 shares. So at 93 cents was my entry, I was willing to swing it for a couple days, and sell, wait for the dump, and then it dumped. Covered at 44 cents for 53%, but 100 shares, 47 bucks. And next one, so you've heard Tim and Dom, or not Tim, um, Dom and Jack talk about the OT swizzle. 
Um, essentially, it is the number two and three from the penny stocking framework, which is the front side of a supernova. Um, if you haven't watched the penny stocking framework, I highly recommend it because it's going to go through all the steps, and the two and three is essentially what the OT Swizzle is. And I kind of learned this, I didn't know Jack and Dom at the time, so I called it a momentum breakout until they showed me and they perfected it and made, helped me get better at it. And so now it's the OT Swizzle, much, much, much better name. Um, and so I kind of found it a little bit, not I didn't find it, but I saw it a little bit because I got better at longing from being a better shorter or a short seller, right? I would see these charts like a buds or a can and it would only be up two green days. And so I'd ask myself like, would I short it here? And not, no, it's not extended enough. So I thought, well, why don't I long it? And so that's kind of what gave me this idea and, and got me to go start going long these. So this is an example of one, another weed runner, ACBFF, um, it is now under ACB on the New York Stock Exchange, but it was on the OTC back um, about a year from now. And so, OT swizzle, we got a spike, and it kind of grinds all day, right? Nice and, nice and tight, nice and consolidated, and when it kind of, you get some volume and a new high a day into the close, and this is when I'm still under PDT, so the last thing I want to do is buy midday and have it fail and me lose a day trade. So I always wanted to buy into the close. It was a good overnight, the next day it gaps up, dips a little bit, but holds green on the day, and then sp spikes, and I sell for 216 bucks. That's the trade here. So 10% overnight from 706 to 779. And then crossing the PDT. After eight months from breaking even in December 2017, now we're in August 2018, and I crossed the PDT with this trader here, AXIM, another short setup. You see here, I don't, unfortunately I couldn't find the intraday chart, but you see here, same thing, looks just like buds and can, right? You see four or five green days in a row. I think I took a little starter on this first green day because it was a smaller green day and lesser volume from the previous day. I added on the red-green move here and covered down into the dips. And I believe this was one of my first $1,000 gains, yeah. Um, so 328 to 377 for 15%, or 227, sorry. Next one. So just, this is it, four setups. Right? OTC panic dip buys, shorting OTCs, shorting for OTC promotions, and running or longing OTC runners, OT swizzle. It was my system that fit my personality and allowed me to grow my accounts exponentially. So clearly, you know, these are all OTCs markets. So what about NASDAQs? What about listed stocks, AMEX, New York Stock Exchange? In 2018, only 12% of my trades were listed. In 2019, 30% of my trades were listed. And that's on purpose. Um, in 2019, I made it a goal, of, or it's still a goal now, to take listeds more seriously, because ultimately, on a, from a short side perspective, that's where a lot of big money is made. And for those of you who know OT, or OTC markets, um, they've been slow this summer. So it's, it's diff it can get difficult when you don't trade both. So luckily, you know, I'm still learning listed, but the two trades that helped me cross 100K were both listed, RKD and YRIB. We got wire, or so both were, I started in pre-market. Normally I would not recommend that, but I did do it because they were failing. The last few days they were gapping up big, and these two days their gap ups failed in pre-market. And so RKDA took a couple small shorts, only 100 shares per arrow you see here. It tried to have a morning spike, couldn't even break the pre-market, high or low right here, panicked, and then I covered in these dips for about 600 bucks. And then we have YRIV, and by the way, sorry, I don't have the daily charts up on these, but these are very similar to buds and cans, but on listed stocks. So you, I think RKD had two green days in a row from like two or three to six, and then YRIV came like from sub $1 all the way up to, I think it's 150, 145. And so same thing with our YRIV. Pre-market short, I realized I was a little bit too early. It supported this new low a day, so I covered. I then reshorted into these, this morning spike here. And the previous, so the, and I don't see this, you don't see this on the, Two day, this is only one day. But the previous day before this, the high a day was 144. The high a day here was 145. And so uh, stuff like that of only one you know, cent, um, it's a you know, fake out, it's not going any higher, so I sorted it or added more. And then goes red for the first time, and I cover into these dips. Unfortunately, I tried to short this bounce, and this little bounce faked me out. Um, but anyone who remembers this play, if you held overnight, it, I think it opened up at 80 cents the next day with a major gap down. But, uh, but that's that, so $1,600 or $600 on YKR, YKDA and $1,300 on YRIV. Thank you. And so that's what my profit chart looks like right when I crossed 100K. 
Um, now, average is 56% win rate, 10%, uh, and about 700 trades. I think about 800 trades now, but, um, but yeah, that's how it looks. So, here. So, doubts and doubters. Did I have our doubts of quitting? Absolutely. Um, you know, when you see the six weeks in a row of no winning, that was, that was absolutely a time where I thought, like, is this for me? Um, fortunately, though, none of those doubts were ever very serious. They lasted maybe a couple minutes because ultimately I knew my obsession and passion to be a profitable trader was so massive that I kind of laughed at myself when thinking about quitting. Um, you know, of course I have those minutes and those few moments of, of extreme doubt, but once I kind of rationalize and get it together, it's like, there's no, I'm not quitting, you know, there's no way, it's not gonna happen. Biggest doubter, uh, my father. So he was skeptical. He wasn't, I'm trying to put the right words together. He didn't support me, but he didn't, discourage me too much, right? He didn't try to take trading away from me or tell me I should quit, but he'd give me these passive aggressive comments, right? He would, he'd see me studying 10, 12 hours a day, and when someone would ask about it, he would tell him, oh, that's just a hobby of his. Um, he would come in, you know, five minutes before the market opened, I'm preparing, getting ready, and he would try to tell me, when are you getting an internship? You're gonna have to start looking for a job. You know, this isn't gonna work. It's not gonna support you like a job would. And, you know, I showed him, like, my first month in March of $130, and he laughed, like, in my face, you know? And luckily, we have a good relationship. Like, he's, everything else, he's amazing. So it's like, I kind of just took it for what it was. Um, but something that kept me through that and dealing with that was that I knew he didn't know what I was capable of, right? He was only telling me that because he loved me, right? He's, you know, been the 9 to 5 for 40 plus years, and he's had a good paying job doing it. So it's like to see him do like that route and have it work so well for him, to see his son take it such an unconventional route of penny stock trading, you know, he just wanted me to be safe. And that was his way of doing it. But he didn't understand that this is what I wanted to do so badly that it didn't matter. So closing with some life concepts that helped me massively in trading and also just in general life. Um, be a positive realist. Negative thoughts will never create a positive life. So any, any profitable trader I know is not a negative person, right? They are extreme, not extremely positive, but they always try to find to look the best in any situation. And I say be a realist, because just because you're positive doesn't mean you have to live in this world of like butterflies and rainbows, right? If you took a massive loss or you're feeling down or you're trading well or trading poorly, like recognize that. You don't have to be like, oh, it's okay. Like, you know, you don't need to comfort yourself. Just accept for what it really is and ultimately find a positive way to overcome that situation you're in. Um, gratitude. Life will never give you more of what you want if you can't be grateful for what you already have. Um, I wear this bracelet here and it says gratitude and I wear it to remind me every day because I remember feeling not depressed in my life but very down for really no reason. Um, and I remember my friend telling me one day, he was like, I'm grateful for like X, I don't even remember what it was. But it was something I had in my life too and that immediately changed how I felt. So expressing gratitude every day makes me 10 times happier and if I take a loss, like I'm grateful for a loss because I usually get a lesson out of it. Um, so just finding little things that you can be happy about, whether small or big, is, is massive. And then patience. It doesn't matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. I don't care when I become a millionaire. I don't. Like, I love trading so much. It could be when I'm 25, when I'm 30. You know, it doesn't matter. I love trading so much that I want to be here and be trading for 10, 20, 30 years. However much I make out of that, that's how much I make. You know, I'm not in a rush. I love what I do. And, you know, ultimately trading well in trading the best I can will make me the money that everyone likes to have and will dream of. Self-talk. You become what you think about all day long. Now, I'm not gonna give you some, you know, life or um, law of attraction, you know, woohoo, but, you know, telling yourself that you can't become a profitable trader is not gonna make you a profitable trader, right? Like, yeah, you may be sucking, you may be taking a lot of losses, but I see people just beat themselves down so much for really no reason other than their own self-doubt. So, you know, telling yourself, like, I can do this, or, you know, I can learn, I'm, I can do anything. Not so much like you're Superman, but just don't beat yourself down for no reason. Um, what you say to yourself matters. Like, conversations how, that you say to yourself matter. And ultimately, most people say things meaner to themselves than they would to their friends or family. And that's kind of shocking. Like, you should be your biggest fan. You should be your biggest cheerleader, not your worst enemy. So, social media, unprofitably, uh, Kyle CW2. You can follow me there and watch my, I post all my trades, so they'll be on there. Uh, Twitter, Trader Kyle, or Kyle, Trader Kyle C. Um, I post trades, um, trader concepts, trading concepts. And then I post YouTube, YouTube's on video, I also put them on profitly. Um, if you do search on YouTube, put Kyle Williams Trader, because you're gonna get 10,000 other people with the name Kyle Williams. 
And then Instagram, I don't post a lot on trading of, on Instagram, but if you want to follow me there, I can, you can also do that. Thanks, guys. All right, thanks a lot, Kyle.